The day has finally arrived. The moment that we all have been waiting for is the general availability for SteamOS to be installed on other handheld devices. Officially, it's only for the Legion Go S, which is coming out pretty soon. The Windows version was already there, so ostensibly you could install that on there and have official support, and obviously the Steam Deck. Now, the Asus RG Ally does not officially have support, but it does for the most part work. And more to the point is that Valve even gives instructions on how to do it on their own website. But I'm going to be in this video showing you how you can go ahead and just install yourself. So go on over in the description field below. There'll be a link to it. But obviously, if you go to SteamOS, you're going to land on the SteamOS page. Scroll on down. You're going to want to look for the part where it says SteamOS recovery image and follow instructions here. Go ahead and click on here. After clicking there, you're going to want to click on the link that says installing SteamOS on other devices. Go ahead and click the device that you want. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to grab SteamOS from here. So it's going to say re-image install SteamOS. I'm doing it from the perspective of doing it from Windows. So you're going to go ahead and download a SteamOS. We're going to also go jump over and download the Rufus utility. So when you click on that, Steam will give you this warning sign. Go ahead and click continue and go to the next one. When you get to the Rufus site, you can go ahead and download the portable version. The portable version just means that it doesn't install. It'll just execute on the machine, which is fine, which is all we need. From there, wait until you download everything. At this point, the only other thing that you're going to need is a USB flash stick that is at least 8 gigabytes in size. And if you have an Asus RG Ally, you're going to need a USB-A to USB-C adapter. From this point, you should already have a SteamOS downloaded. From here, you can open up Rufus. You can see where your USB flash drive is, in, is inserted. Go ahead and click click on the Steam Deck Repair, and from here, just click Start. It's going to warn you that all the data on that USB drive is going to be deleted. So if you have data on there that you need to back up, make sure that you go ahead and push that somewhere else before you obliterate all the data on your USB flash drive. From here, it takes a bit to write to the disk, so wait until it gets to writing to 100%. From there, you'll just wait until that finishes, and then you'll see a button that says Close. From this point, you can safely remove the USB flash stick, and we're going to go on and head over to the Asus RG Ally. Now, very quickly, on the SteamOS page, it'll give you instructions to do for the Ally. So very quickly, we can review what it says there. So it'll say installing SteamOS on other devices. You can click on that and scroll on down to the ROG Ally. Now, it says while powered on, hit restart. That's technically not really necessary. So while it's powering up, just go ahead and hold the volume plus button, and this will get you into the BIOS utility from here, you can press Y to go to the advanced mode, hit the D-pad right button to the security tab, go down to secure boot, make sure secure boot control is set to disabled. From there, you can go ahead and press B to go back and save and exit. From here, we can go ahead and start the install process. Now from here, we're going to start installing on the Asus RG Ally. It's a very simple process, but if you only have a simple dongle that will convert USB-C to USB-A, you will not have any mechanism to actually power, send power to you to your Asus RG Ally. You could also use a USB-C dock that'll work as well in this instance. So this way you can also uh, put power into the device while you're doing all this. In the event that you don't have that, it's fine. Just make sure your device is relatively powered up. You know, ob obviously it'd be optimal to be at 100%, but even at 50%, it'll be fine. I'm going to do it through the avenue of not having any power. So you're going to see that the system will actually go to standby. We'll be able to recover from that. But we'll go ahead and start up here. So again, we're going to start up the device while everything is connected. The USB-A and USB-C is connected. And while the machine is booting up again, we're going to go ahead and hold the volume plus button. This will give us a boot menu. From there, you're going to select your USB flash stick, the first partition. In my case, it's the SanDisk. At that point, it will start loading into the preamble for us to start to install SteamOS. It's going to get you into a basic SteamOS desktop. And how it works is that the touchscreen will just require you to tap on the button once. Do not double tap. It's not necessary. If you do double tap, it'll just open up twice. So just be mindful of that when you just do a single tap, that that's all that's necessary. It's conveniently named Wipe Device and Install SteamOS. It will. It gives you a warning. It says, this action will wipe and reinstall SteamOS on this device. This will permanently destroy all the data. This is not recoverable. Are you sure you want to proceed? So at this point, you should be 100% confident that whatever data is on this device, you don't care about anymore because it's going to go away. If you do care about any of the data, make sure you back up anything somewhere else before continuing at this point. If you continue past this point, it will wipe your data and you'll be toast. But in the event that it falls asleep, don't worry, don't fret, just press the power button once and that'll wake up the system and you should see that, you know, action successful, choose proceed to reboot now. Go ahead and click that, at which point you're done. Once the system reboots, go ahead and 
pull out the USB dongle. It's not no longer needed and everything that is installed is on the SSD at this point. So no need to have that inserted anymore. From here, it's going to take a hot moment for it to load. So if you see this screen, don't worry, just kind of let it do its thing. At this point, you could uh, start putting power into the device. So you're not worried about running out of power at this point and just let it boot up. You'll have the startup screen. So just select your language of choice, choose all the options that apply to you and make sure you connect to Wi-Fi and it'll start downloading everything that it needs to do. At this point, you have the official SteamOS installed on your Asus RG Ally. In fact, when you go to controller, it also actually fully supports the Asus RG Ally controller. So the back paddle buttons work, even the gyro works. And when you press the guide button, the quick access menu, that will come up nicely as well. So we're gonna go through a quick little demo here, just showing that the game works, the touchscreen works, and you can actually enter your name. So all of this stuff operates as you would assume it would work. And you can see that if I move it around that the gyro is working on this device as well. So really cool to see that most everything is operating as it should. So the quick access menu does work and you can, for the most part, toggle most all settings, brightness works, sound works, the mic works, all of these things operate as you would expect them to work. One area where it's not gonna operate where you would expect it to work is that we do not, because we do not have official support on Asus RG Alley yet, we do not have TDP controls, nor do we have GPU clock controls. So if you are looking to tweak performance at, of the system itself, you're not gonna be able to do that. As a result, the system is pretty much gonna be locked at a cap of 15 watts and will not go further than that. So on the Asus RG Ally, you will be restricted on performance based on that 15 watt cap. The system can give more, but it just won't because of that cap. So up until the point that I guess official SteamOS uh, support comes where it actually has TDP control and GPU control, we don't have that just yet. So that's the one thing that I've seen that it's actually missing here, but all the Asus controls work, including the gyro, which is great to see. It's at this point that you are done and you have installed the official version of SteamOS on your Asus RJ Ally or Ally X. Like I've already demonstrated, most everything works, all of the controls work. So for the most part, all of the features that you would want to get out of this device are gonna be there for the official version of SteamOS. I've installed the beta version so I can see if that works. It took a little bit, it said that it had an error, but I just restarted and then it installed. So I'm on 3.77 beta version of SteamOS on this. Just wanna see if I can get the advanced version so that I could get maybe TB control and GPU clock control in advance before that actually you know comes to stable build. So I'll keep an eye on that to see when that eventually comes. In the meantime, it may be beneficial for you to go to Bazite, which will be able to have TDB clock control and GPU clock control, also other CPU controls, so that you can more effectively take control of the chipset that's on here. That being said, the SteamOS version with the 15 watt cap is gonna be better for this just because it's 40 watt hour battery, even going up to 15 watt as a cap, you're gonna get like 90 minutes to 100 minutes of battery life when pushing that in a, in a demanding game, obviously. In games that are less demanding, you've got better battery life. On the Ally X, you're gonna get three hours and 10 minutes at that 15, uh, 15 watt TDP cap. So thank you very much to my YouTube channel members as well as my Patreon members. I hope this video is informative. As always, guys, thank you for your time and thanks for watching.